Foodstutters. So I am going to show you a quick tomato basil soup recipe. It is late, but we had gotten these tomatoes done earlier. So I'm doing a late night recipe. What I like to do with this, because I'm actually making this for the tea party for the fall, this freezes really well in mason jars, just typical quart size mason jars. It freezes really well in there and you can keep it forever. Um, you cannot can something that has dairy in it. So don't try and can that. You can store it in mason jars, but you have to freeze it. You cannot can it and make it shelf stable as long as it has dairy in it. So just note to you while you're uh, working on this. I just dropped stuff on the floor here. I am going to start with a stick of butter in here. I have probably between 15 and 20 tomatoes in here. We, we kind of have been splitting them between a lot of different things. So I've got cans of just tomatoes that I did and stuff, but um, we blanched them. Jason and I went ahead and boiled them, blanched them. He cored and peeled them for me. So these tomatoes are already without their skins and their cores. Um, and now they are just the tomato. Yes, you can put your seeds and your middles, your juices in here, because as I was cutting tomatoes for other stuff, I was dumping the juice in here to use for the soup later, which is a really good use of the juice. So with about um, 15 to 20 tomatoes, one stick of butter will go in here. I've got this on medium heat. Uh, it's fairly easy to do. I'm gonna add about half of this. This is a quart of um, half and half, regular half and half. I'm gonna add about half and kind of take a look at the consistency as I go. Because I never know exactly how many tomatoes I'm going to use in this recipe, it's based on how many have come in. Uh, I never know exactly how many cups of something to add or tablespoons of something to add, but I always am generous on the butter and the cream because that is the base of your soup. This is tomato basil soup base is not tomato. Tomato basil soup be, base is a cream based soup. So you wanna make sure that you get plenty of the cream in there. So I'm melting everything down. It looks pretty good in there. The other thing that I really like to add to give this soup a nice flavorful base is chicken broth. So, this is actually chicken stock from Lidl because it was marked down to a dollar a piece a couple of weeks ago and I stocked up on it. Get it? <laughs> because it's chicken stock? Anyway, um, I usually add a whole one of this. It really helps to cut back on the acid in the tomatoes to have chicken broth or chicken stock in this case, but chicken broth is fine. I most of the time use my own chicken broth but in this case, I only have one quart left of my chicken broth, so I'm not going to use that. Don't know how well you can see, because if I turn the light off, then it's just spooky. But this light does like a weird flicker thing. I'm filming at night. We just got done with church. I kind of had to take a break and, and all of my cooking, um, so everything's kind of been waiting for me to come back. So it's become nighttime between when I started this and when I'm actually finishing it. If you can't tell, I have apple there because in the background I have apple butter going in a crock pot. These are the peels and the cores which are going to turn into apple juice um, once they come to a boil. And up front here I have tomato basil soup. That is a really pretty, that's a pretty um, color. I like I like the more pink color of it. I wish I could show you this without this light and weirding things out, but the way the kitchen is set up, it's really hard to get natural light in here. So I'm really sorry about that, but I can't help it because that's the way things are. Next, I'm going to go ahead and start adding basil leaves. Because I use an immersion blender with this, I don't bother breaking the leaves up. I just go ahead and put them in there whole because the immersion blender does the work for me of getting them all broken up in here. Now I bought an immersion blender and a really good Black Friday deal, um, but they're not very expensive and they make soups like this really smooth and wonderful. I have not had an immersion blender um, in the past and it has been a real pain to scoop this out into a 
blender and blend it little bit by little bit. It's just a pain. The immersion blender makes it fast and easy. Is this sage? No, this is basil. <laughs> my basil and my sage are growing right next to each other and I literally just grabbed a handful and went. So it's a good thing I didn't accidentally grab sage. Because I don't know that that would be good. Tomato basil soup with a dash of sage. Let's see. Ooh, I don't know about that. Uh, so why does it taste look like sage? That's definitely basil though. Okay, picked these off of my own basil plant a little bit earlier. I'm using probably the equivalent of a half a cup of leaves in here. Um, but how many leaves you use is dependent on how strong of a basil flavor that you want. You can also use basil stir-in paste, which I've used before. You can use dried basil, just be a little bit more generous with the dried basil. So at least three tablespoons in here of dried basil. I mean, I just pretty much take it and open the dump spout and like just dump until it looks right. But about three tablespoons should do it. Okay, the butter's nice and melty. So I think this should be good to start doing the version blender. Okay, now when I'm making a cream-based soup uh, like this, I like it to be really smooth because when I'm eating it, I just, I'm not a person who likes chunks of tomato in my tomato soups. I like a real, you know, like the typical tomato soup that you have with a um, grilled cheese sandwich. I like a real smooth soup. So I'm kind of that way with my tomato basil where I like a smoother soup. Let me add a little bit, I'm gonna get a stool because Ariana was gonna help me, so she put a stool right in my way. I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper, maybe a half teaspoon. Salt helps cut down on the acidity of the tomatoes. So I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to the top. My salt shaker's actually running out, but that is probably the equivalent of one teaspoon. And then I am going to add a little dash of sugar because a lot of times with tomato recipes, and I, I actually add a little dash of sugar to my chili. And let me tell you, it helps cut back on the acidity and the heartburn a lot. So I usually like to add a little bit of sugar to things that are really high acid like this, just to help cut back on the way that my body processes it and then not have as much of the, the heartburn going on. This is a teeny tiny, these are called demi toss spoons. So the equivalent, that was just three of them. That's probably the equivalent of about a teaspoon of sugar. Not much. Um, I just keep a little thing of sugar near my cooking for when I do use little tiny bits. I'm gonna blend that in. And then I'll show you what the soup is looking like. The real shining parts of the soup are definitely the basil and the cream. So it's okay if you want to add a little bit more of one or the other. Um, like I said, this is one that I kind of eyeball and I taste test as I go. So let's see how it's looking really pretty. It should be about an orangey color, um, like a sienna, burnt orange, whatever you want to call it. Can you see it? Or will you see it a little bit better? Anyway. Don't fall down. Um, so that is looking really good. Now the thing that I want to do is uh, give it a little taste test. So this is where it really matters. And this soup is actually better with time. So I have literally just whipped this up in 11 minutes. So these flavors haven't had a chance to mesh but I can kind of get it at least a feel for how much salt may need to still be added, how much sugar may still need to be added, if I need to add any more cream or butter to it. So here we go, let's see. Mmm, needs the other stick of butter. The whole other stick. <laughs> the whole other stick. There we go. 
Needs more cream. Needs a little bit more basil. Again, I literally do this by sight. I'm just gonna go ahead and use the whole quarter cream in this because it could use a little more than what it has. Yes, this is a very fattening soup, <laughs> which is why you only have a little bit of it whenever you're having a sandwich or something. I am gonna go ahead and throw my other basil leaves in because I don't think it's basil-y enough. So I wanna go ahead and throw in the basil that I still have sitting over here on reserve. Just a few more leaves. Okay, so that is what, five more big leaves. That's all I've got over here. I can go pick more if I need it. Yeah, so it's not giving me as much as I need to come out of it. There we go, that's a little bit better. Now it's kind of dumping. I'm gonna give it at least another teaspoon of salt because it didn't taste like it had anything in it at all. That's the thing about starting with tomatoes that are fresh from the garden is they need a little bit of help to get a lot of flavor out of them with a soup like this. They're wonderful on sandwiches, but they need some extra help when it comes to soup. Heavens, if you have it, you might even wanna consider adding some bacon grease. There's a bunch of them stuck in here. This is not the spoon I ate off of. That's sitting somewhere else. I'm not one of those people who believes that hot, heating something up causes the germs to go away. No. <laughs> That's not the way things work. Don't lick and stick. You don't lick something and then stick it back in the food you're cooking. That's just really gross. So when I am actually testing something after I've already used my spoon, I usually just do this over here. Take a little bit off, put it in my waiting spoon, not over the pot, and then give it a little taste test again. Mmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's right. So that was another stick of butter. That's two sticks of butter. But this is a huge pot of soup. This is actually going to be intended to serve at least 30 ladies, a little cup of soup at the tea party. So um, this is going to be plenty for that. So this was somewhere around, like I said, 20 to 25 tomatoes roughly, and then two sticks of butter, a quart of cream, salt, pepper, um, half a cup of basil leaves plus five or six additional leaves. <laughs> But, and then a whole, a whole container of uh, chicken stock, but you can use chicken broth. Um, and just make sure as you're going, you adjust it to your taste. So well, my husband likes things more peppery. I could add more pepper if I want to. But personally, I like to leave things and let people, like I want flavor to be there. But when it comes to overly salting, putting too much pepper, people can put how much they want in their own stuff. So usually when I cook, I just salt and pepper to get pull out the flavor, but I don't salt and pepper to actually taste salt and pepper. So when you're doing something like this or any cooking for that matter, just make sure that unless the recipe calls for a certain amount of salt and pepper, that you let people who are eating their food on their own do their own salting and peppering. It does make a difference to them. So that is it. That is my tomato basil soup. Really easy. Not that many ingredients. If you're already growing basil, if you're already growing tomatoes, then you already have the majority of the recipe or the ingredients right there for this recipe. I'm sure you have salt and pepper on your shelf. I'm sure you have a little bit of sugar sitting to the side. So the only things that you would need to buy are half and half butter and chicken broth or chicken stock in this case, because it was cheaper. So my pressure canner is getting ready to start spewing so it's about to start getting noisy in here so i need to go ahead and get this moved to the quartz i'm going to freeze it in and let it sit and just become yummier over the next couple of months and i need to down turn my attention to the apple juice and apple butter and i will see you in another video thanks for hanging out with me tonight guys bye